uh, dropped their blood pressure 6%, about double that drop in those that were hypertensive to begin with. 14th leading killer, Parkinson's disease. Does a vegan diet reduce risk for Parkinson's disease? Good question. Well, we know that every single prospective study ever done on um, dairy products, milk consumption, and the risk of Parkinson's disease found increased risk of Parkinson's. Why? Well, one possibility is that dairy products in the United States are contaminated with neurotoxic chemicals. There's substantial evidence um, suggesting that exposure to pesticides may increase uh, Parkinson's disease risk. And these autopsy studies have found that the levels of these pollutants and pesticides in the brains of elevated levels in the brains of, of Parkinson's disease patients, and some of these toxins are present at low levels in dairy products. And they're talking about toxins um, like uh, tetrahydroisoquinoline, which is a Parkinsonism related compound found particularly in cheese. Now, although the amounts of this neurotoxin, even in cheese, are not very high, the concern is that they may accumulate, these neurotoxins may accumulate in the brain over long periods of consumption. And finally, uh, aspiration pneumonia, which is caused by swallowing problems due to Parkinson's or having a stroke or Alzheimer's, all of which we've already covered. All right, so where does that leave us? These are the top 15 causes of death, the top 15 reasons Americans die. And a plant-based diet can help prevent nearly all of them, can help treat more than half of them, and in some cases even reverse the progression of disease, including our top three killers. Now, there are drugs that can help too, right? You can take one drug to treat uh, cholesterol every day for the, uh, the rest of your life, another drug for blood sugars, uh, a few more pills for, uh, for, your, for your blood pressure. Right? The same diet, though, does it all, right? It's not like, you know, one diet for this and then a different diet for this, right? One diet to rule them all. <laughs> and what about drug side effects? Right? I'm not talking about a little rash or something. Prescription drugs kill more than 100,000 Americans every year. And I'm not talking about medication errors, not abuse, not overdose. We're talking, this is just deaths from side effects, so-called ADRs, adverse drug reactions to prescription drugs. Wait a second, 100,000 deaths a year? That means, let's go down the list, whoa, that means that the sixth leading cause of death in the United States is doctors. <laughs> the sixth leading cause of death is me. <laughs> Thankfully, I can be prevented with a plant-based <laughs> diet. Seriously though, um, uh, uh, compared to 15,000 American vegetarians, meat eaters had about twice the odds of being on aspirin, sleeping pills, tranquilizers, antacids, painkillers, blood pressure medications, laxatives, and insulin, right? So plant-based diets are great for people that don't like taking drugs, don't like paying for drugs, um, and of course don't like risking adverse effects, right? Now this study did show that plant-based diets have their own side effects. Side effects include a lower risk of chronic disease, fewer allergies, fewer surgeries, we're talking, um, uh, fewer varicose veins and hemorrhoids, even fewer hysterectomies. Um, and we're not talking just the big killers, right? Not just less heart disease, cancer. This is the longest study on vegetarians in human history. Uh, not just uh, less heart disease and stroke and high blood pressure and diabetes, but less diverticulosis, less, if you can read this, less um, diseases overall, right? That's the side effects of a plant-based diet, less disease overall. Here's the allergies thing. Again, longest running study on vegetarians in history. Women who eat meat compared to vegetarians appear to have a 30% greater risk of uh, reporting chemical allergies, 24% um, uh, asthma, more uh, drug allergies, even more bee sting allergies, 15% um, more hay fever. A new side effect of plant-based diets we just learned about last year, fewer cataracts, right? That's what we get. Fewer cataracts, the leading cause of blindness and vision loss. 
compared to those just eating a single serving of meat a day, right, in one meal, those eating half a serving a day um, drop the risk 15 percent. Um, uh, just eat fish, dropped about 21%, get rid of fish, drop 30%, get rid of eggs and dairy, full 40% drop in risk. And that's all in addition to my favorite side effect of plant-based diets, helping to prevent 15 out of our 16 top killers. Want to solve the healthcare crisis? I've got a suggestion. Imagine if our nation embraced a plant-based diet. Right? Imagine if we just significantly cut back on meat. Well, there's actually one country that did it. After World War II, Finland joined us and started packing on the meat, eggs, and dairy. And by 1970s, the mortality rate from heart disease of Finnish men was the highest in the world, even put us to shame. So, look, they didn't want to die, so they got serious. Heart disease is caused by high cholesterol. High cholesterol is caused by high saturated fat intake. So the main focus of the strategy was to reduce the high saturated fat intake in the country. So uh, this means uh, here that's uh, cheese, chicken, uh, cake, and pork, basically. All right. So a berry project was launched to help dairy farmers switch to berry farming. Right? Whatever it took. And indeed, many farmers did switch from dairies to berries. They pitted villages against each other in these friendly cholesterol-lowering competitions to see who could, who could do the best. All right, so how'd they do? All right. look, look, on a population scale, even if mortality rates drop, you know, 5%, I mean, that could save thousands of lives, right? But remarkably great changes took place. In 80% drop in cardiac mortality across the entire country. 80% drop in heart disease deaths. With such greatly reduced the rates of cardiovascular and cancer mortality, the all-cause mortality was basically almost cut in half, leading to um, seven more years, uh, men are living seven more years, six more years for women. Right? And uh, look, this is just cutting down on animal products. Now vying for the world record for heart disease deaths, of course, the United States of America. So why doesn't our government make these same recommendations? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I've got this whole series of videos on the conflicts of interest within the U.S. Dietary Guidelines Committees. They're the ones that make the recommendations, right? Um, and indeed, whether they're funded by candy bar corporations or the Sugar Association, right? or a member of uh, McDonald's Council on Healthy Lifestyles, <laughs> serving on Coca-Cola's Beverage Institute for Health and Wellness. Um, and notice, uh, we only know about this thanks to a PCRM lawsuit against the USDA. Very impressive. Very good. One committee member um, uh, served as the Duncan Hines brand girl and then as the Crisco brand girl. These are the folks, all right? Dictate U.S. nutrition policy, right? If you read the official dietary guideline recommendations, you'll note that there is no discussion at all of the scientific research on the health consequences of eating meat. Why? Because if the committee actually discussed this research, it would be unable to justify its recommendation to eat meat at all. As the research would show that meat increases the risk for chronic diseases, contrary to the purpose of having dietary guidelines in the first place, right? <laughs> Thus, by simply ignoring the research, the committee is able to come to a conclusion that would otherwise look improper, right? All right, all right. Um, you know, so they can't even talk about the science. Right? We know that a plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, no meat, um, reverses heart disease, completely prevents death from heart disease, slows the progression of cancer, and the almost identical diet promoted by the World Cancer Research Fund to prevent cancer based on the largest review of scientific studies to, death, uh, to date. But again, right, they can't even talk about the science um, because how could they justify anything but a plant-based diet? Let me end with was probably the best summary of nutrition policy in the United States that I've ever seen. 
the new dietary guidelines have been released. Right? They tell us to eat healthier, but not as healthy as to noticeably affect any corporate profits. <laughs> Thank you very much. to check out my new video every day. Please share the site with friends and family. Um, uh, buy them all DVDs, all proceeds to charity. And remember, please feel free to stop by for a free cholesterol check. See everybody there. Thank you, Dr. Gray.